Hey everybody, it's Eddie Joe Crypto for Grow My Bag TV. Um, this is going to be one of my last long videos um, before we launch. Um, this could be the last one. I'm, tr I'm trying to launch everything like over the weekend. Um, but let's get into it. CoinShares got the okay to snatch up Valkyrie funds from Valkyrie Investments. That's actually a very big deal because Valkyrie Funds is the ETF arm. They're the crypto ETF portion. So when you look at that, yes, Valkyrie is one of the companies that has a couple of ETF applications in. So yeah, that goes over to CoinShares, who's trying to who's trying to expand in the United States. So that's a very big deal. I want to see how that plays out. CoinShares is a big player in the space in Europe um, or overseas, rather. Sorry. Um, Ave companies. This is interesting. Ave is a nice DeFi, you know, DeFi player, uh, well known. They're changing their brand over to Avara. In as much they's they've also snatched up Los Feliz Engineering based out of Los Angeles. This engineering company specializes in metaverse software development. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I don't know if you know, but I'm actually a founding or principal me member of the Metaverse Standards Forum. And what we do is we try to put together standards for the Metaverse. So things like um, bringing your avatar from one Metaverse to another, um, your wearables from one Metaverse to another. We're all about interoperability. So when I see something like this, it piques my interest in a major fashion. So I'm definitely going to take a look at, you know, and keep an eye on what Avara does going forward. Um, I wonder if they're moving into, you know, deeply into the metaverse space. Remember, I think that gaming, uh, real estate, and uh, other things can make the metaverse huge. DeFi would play a major part in that. So I'm looking at this and I'm just saying, wow, because imagine how many more stores are going to build out within the metaverse, offering experiences in the metaverse and tying in real world applications and things. There's a space for DeFi. So I'm just saying I, I like the move. Now I want to see what they do with it. Um, strike is expanding globally. Right now you can use Strike in 36 different countries and they have plans on expanding to 65 plus. So what they've done now, if they've, they've expanded and they've offered new on-ramp and off-ramp opportunities for people around the world to obtain, sell, use Bitcoin. That's kind of big news, right? I like, you notice, I like anything that has to deal, has to deal with adoption not necessarily institutional adoption but retail regular people adoption regular use of crypto that's what i find interesting now on the bad news side i've been hearing i've been reading a lot of a lot of things coming out of this guy steven nareoff apparently he was an early insider um, with ethereum and he's laying down a lot of accusations against you know vitalik buterin and I have to tell you, you know, unless he's done something more morally reprehensible, he's done something illegal, then what are you talking about? Right? I don't want to hear accusations. I want to see proof. Supposedly, there are recordings and this, that, the other. And I'm like, these recordings are from 2015. Right? That's like me telling my baby sister to shut the fuck up when I was a kid. Excuse the language. But when I was a kid and getting in trouble, am I that same person now? Well, you know, probably because I, you know, I mess with my sister all the time. Um, <laughs> but, my, but my point is, is that from 2015 to now, in 2015, crypto was still in its fledgling stages. I don't know that I'm the same person from 2015, let alone somebody else that's working on something like that. Um, that's not to say if, that, if, that if he did do something wrong, that he shouldn't be punished for it or something like that. But it does bother me that after all this time, now you have something to say. And that immediately throws up a red flag and kind of tells me, I, I don't know that I trust anything that you have to say. 
right? Um, I'm going to wait until I see real evidence, real evidence, not yap, yap. So just saying, I want, I want to see it um, or hear it. Um, and, and you have to be able to prove that that's actually Vitalik Buterin. Just saying, I, it troubles me that this is how you're going about it. What happened that this is, this is how you chose to go. Um, now, something that is very interesting to me. I've been waiting for credit card companies to actually come out formally against CBDCs because it it's, uh, it's, a, it's a natural thing, right? They're already having to deal with crypto, another payments platform, right? That's, that's what it is. Um, and then, I mean, it's more than that, but, you know, basically. And then when you look at credit cards, well, they're also a mature and robust, you know, payments platform. Well, MasterCard finally came out and said, listen, I don't know how CBDCs or we don't know how CBDCs are going to play out in the retail space in countries that already have robust payment systems. Right. I mean, there's all there are already credit cards. There are already bank debit cards. There are already there's already crypto and crypto, in case you haven't realized, is cross border in seconds seconds I can send money almost anywhere in the world. So CBDCs bring what to the table for who? That's really what the question is. And the answer is, if governments don't control money, governments don't have control, right? It's really that simple. CBDCs, I think, offer too much power to the government, too much power to a small group of people, and you don't know what they're going to do with it. That's my problem with CBDCs. So I'm happy to stick with crypto. I'm happy to use my credit card. I'm happy to use my bank debit card. Um, as more businesses, you know, host their e-commerce websites, you know, with one of my companies, you know, I'm happy to use crypto with them. The more I get to use crypto, the happier I am. I even tell clients that I consult with, that my team consults with, pay us in crypto, please. That's our preferred payment, you know, mechanism, right? Then comes ACH deposits because that's cash coming in. Lastly comes credit cards. Lastly, why? Because me as the vendor, that costs me money. So MasterCard coming out and talking about CBDCs, to me, that's a very big deal. So hat tip to them for actually coming out and standing up and having a word about it. I'd like to see everybody else do the same thing. Now, something else that really happened that really, really makes me smile is Coinbase has introduced the on-chain payment protocol. And this idea for them is to make it so that when retailers leverage Coinbase for retail operations, meaning payment, you know, transactions, the transactions will be more efficient, they'll be faster and cheaper. That's huge as you start to realize that, you know, there are a lot of retailers out there that are interested in doing crypto, at least want to be able to say we accept crypto, right? But number one, don't know how to get started. You can call my you can call me, call my company, drop me a DM. Um, but you can also leverage Coinbase. No, they don't pay me. Um, you can you can these transactions would be settled across Base, obviously, um, Polygon, right? Because they're crazy fast, or wicked fast, and Ethereum, right? This is going to wind up being a big deal. I keep telling people Coinbase is going to be the black rock of crypto. Just keep watching. Something else that I'd like to touch on. I've been seeing a lot of people talk about, you know, degening, you know, using leverage to uh, make investments in crypto. And a lot of people have been asking me, what's my opinion on doing that? My opinion is don't. That's straight up. My opinion is don't. Unless you're filthy freaking rich and you can afford to gamble away money, don't. There are two things wrong with it. One, you can lose your shirt, right? A second one is, is that the excitement is much along the same lines as gambling, and it's addictive. So don't. That's my response. If you want me to do a longer reason why, I can do that. But in short, don't. For those two reasons. It's real quick to lose your money. And that's on either side of the bet. It's real quick to lose your money. Anyway, you know what we should do. We should get into the numbers. So let's do that. 
All right. So, as you know, everybody took money off the table yesterday. And why is that today and this morning? Um, why is that? Because it was the right time to take profit. Start with learning how to trade stocks and you'll understand crypto. Learn how to do Forex, you'll understand crypto. But the main, main idea is if you're up, it's not a profit until you take it. And it's not a loss until you realize it. I, wish I say that again. It's not a profit until you take it. It's not a loss until you, until you realize it. And what that means is if I don't pull my money out, I haven't taken a loss. I haven't gained any profit. So when you're above a certain amount, like Warren Buffett's number, I think is like 10%. Once he makes 10%, he's out. He's taking his money because it's a win. It is a win. And I said yesterday, hey, you know, we want to move sideways. It's going to give you opportunities to buy and sell. Nobody should be shocked. Absolutely nobody should be shocked. So right now we're seeing, you know, coins take it on the chin. World coin down 18%. Meme coin, that's that's just dumb. I'm not even going to bother. Um Caspa is down 14%. I think yesterday we said they were up. Ordi down 13%. Let's see who else. Psy, they just had that deal that I told you about yesterday. Go watch yesterday's video. Um, they're down 12%. That was the deal with Circle. Just go go watch the video. Um, let's see who else is something I pay attention to. Lido down 11%. Um, who else? Arbitrum down 10%. Didex down 10%. These are strong projects that are down double digit numbers. Frankly, to me, these are opportunities. Right? We have we're not fully into a bull run. So if we're not fully into a bull run, I'm looking at this and I'm going, "Oh, opportunity, let me get in." Right? Let me get in. I took some profit. Great. Now that everything's down low, double digits like this? Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Um, Solana's down 10%. Solana's been riding high. Polygon down 9%. Injective down 9%. I'm just saying, there, there are opportunities that are staring you right dead in the face right now. You know, so these are things that I'm looking at, and this is how I would play those things. Near Protocol is up 4%, but basically, you know my 5% rule. So all of these, yeah, I'm not going to pay attention to any of those, right? Because there's their, their movement is less than 5%. And that's, you know, that's just straight up. Um, Hedera, a 1% move. Yeah, that doesn't count, right? I, I just want to be honest with you. Um, I didn't bring up any of, the, any of the pages that I wanted to bring up. Let's see if I can bring up CoinMarketCap. Um, let's see. That one's up. Let's see if I can bring up this one. These are the big ones that I pay attention to um, to make it easy for me to see things. So there you go. On the big board, you can see how hard of a hit everybody's taking. Link, Matic, you know, Polkadot, um, Optimism, Injective, um, Near is up a little bit, but everybody else is down. You know what I'm saying? So to me, again, these are opportunities to look at and go, wow, I can make some dough. Cardano down to 36 cents. <laughs> they were just up near 40. Yeah, I'll take that. And it's still above where it was. I kept telling you, I keep telling you that what we're experiencing are higher lows, right? So our pullback right now, pay, pay attention to this. Look at this, 36,411. Our pullback is a higher low. When we retrace, we're, we're hitting higher lows. These are the things I'm paying attention to, right? If Look at Ethereum, down 4.79%, basically down 5%. And where are you? Above 1,800, well above 1,800, thank you. These are the things I pay attention to. So when you ask me, hey, how do you do your research? What are you starting to pay attention to? These are the things I pay attention to. Now, let's get back to the news. This could very well be my last long video that I actually publish externally. Going forward, I'm probably only going to launch the uh, Crypto Minute um, on, on other platforms. I'll be moving this over to Grow My Bag and fully be over on Grow My Bag. Like I said, we're planning on launching this weekend. Um, technically, you can sign up now. Um, we're not looking perfect, right? But a lot, of work, a lot of work, a ton of work and money went into building what we have now. And we're still building. We're still adding features. Um, but we're there. We're there. And I'm, we're going we're gonna to get it out the door for you 
if not today, tomorrow. Like, I want to do this this weekend, right? I mean, one thing that we're doing is we have in our articles that we've written in the since August 31st, just to give you some metrics, since August 31st, we've banged out over 510 articles. 510 articles from August alone. Right. So, yes, it's a social media platform, but it's bigger than that. It's social media with information, conversation and education. This is what we're shooting for. So do me a favor. Join me on growmybag.tv and help us build a stronger community for people that have a like mind with regard to investment uh, and business management. Right. I want to grow my personal investments and I want to do better with business management. So I want to be surrounded by people that are like minded. When you want to grow your bag, your bag can come in different ways. So come join us, become a bagger and let's have some fun and let's grow together. All right. This is Eddie J on Crypto for Grow My Bag TV. I hope you have a good one. Bye bye.